Okay. For people who are joining this live stream, this is one of an infinite series of meetings about language completeness and consistency for Wolfram Language. And our first topic for today is the iconize function and um, new design for it. Okay, so should we look at this design here? Um, okay, hold on. Uh, I should be accessing this. Let's see. Is there a problem with the internal site here? Oh no, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> so talk us through this, Billy. So here, I'm not Billy, but I, I met with Billy to look at this before the meeting so I can speak to this. So the first question we have is openers on the left or right. And so we have sort of two examples of, of things. One is the, right, this community graph plot, which is a list and my graph, which is a, a name thing. And then on one of, so the only difference between the one series and the two series is opener left or right. And yes. Um, Jeremy I, Davis, what do you think about this? I liked it left. Well, so, so opener right icon left was my preference. And I think Billy started with the other side because we have this for summary boxes and there's an argument to stay consistent there versus entities, which open to, I think but I, I kind of prefer to move everything to the right, including summary boxes. You mean this one here, this design? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of like that, because you just lead with the unique thing as opposed to leading with a plus sign. So I, I kind of like leading with the, you know, the identity of the blob. Yes. Well, uh, on I, the other hand, if it's on the left, then it's always in the same place and you don't have the you know, variable width thing shoving it over. It doesn't though. This design doesn't shove anything over. It's you know it expands but stays in the same spot. Yeah, it should stay under the mouse. Yeah. Really? Well, you can see there yeah, the look, minus look. Oh, I see. I, I sorry, I was scanning the wrong way. Yes, if I go from up to down, then yes. Uh, no, what I meant is that you know if you look at my graph equals Marvel Universe graph, you know I, I have. You know, when it's on the left, the plus is always. I understand what you're saying. It's always in a fixed location relative to the uh, beginning of the box. But so what? I mean, in the other case, it's in a fixed location relative to the end of the box. Right. So we're not going to have the the, the opener right aligned. I guess. I guess is yeah, that... we looked at that. That seemed like what we do. And then it's like obvious. You don't want to be jumping back and forth with your mouse to, to toggle. Um, well, so how does this relate to other things? I mean, what's another example of something that, that has a plus like this? I mean, is this some... Um... So, so do sparse array of one, two, three, or entity, I think? Or no, entity doesn't have a plus by default. There's something like entity that has a plus, Billy. What... Uh, implicit entity classes. So like if you yeah, okay. the yeah. largest countries, it would be on the right. Yeah, actually... I would agree that putting, I mean, could we could we get a mock-up of this on the right? I agree that this might look better on the right, especially when you're ganging it up with the icon. Yeah, I, I really never liked that conflict of the two. It would feel much better on the right. Fine. I mean, what happens in this multi, uh, you know, double-decker thing here? I think Billy had a design. He was thinking maybe top right. Um, oh, that's like, that sounds right. Yeah. Okay, and, and let's let's look at the implicit entity. So you're saying entity of country, arrow, Population arrow largest three or something. Yeah, take largest three. Oh, well, that is on the right. Yeah, oh, it's nice. heavy. You know, it's a little too heavy, but other than, you know, position wise, it makes sense. Okay, so uniformizing this sounds like a good idea. Yeah. So, so what does it look like when it's open? I mean, it moves, but not for a good reason. I think there's some weird formatting issue going on with the slight movement. Right. I yes. mean, there, in, in summary boxes, the, I mean, there isn't a guarantee that the thing up top 
is the same when you open it than I when it's closed. That, that level, well, I mean, we can always just decide. I see what you're saying. It mm. could be that the overall box gets wider, for example. Right. Ooh, that's ugly. Well, maybe. I mean, you could imagine an edge case where that's horrible with lots of padding in the closed form. Yeah, sure. Which is not, that, that's not right. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at like... Uh... Like compiled function. I mean, you how would I how would I do that? I, I would you say need compiled. to go to a rep range. Uh, and, uh, no, it, it, or is it? It must be library function that I'm thinking of. Just just go to the rough page. That's okay. Um, well, well, slightly. Yeah. Yeah, that one could get wider. Right. And well, okay, I'm clearly not thinking of, of the right hit, but there, there are cases where we sort of, you know, in the closed form we, we truncate, but then in the in the open form we allow uh, like a file name. So like if this library function, so this has the function name rather than the function name rather than the file name. But for example, if you had the file name. We limit the width, but then in the open state, we allow you to see the full file. Name. Okay, so hold on a second. That's true of the of the lines at the top, or that's true only of lines further down? That is true of lines at the top. Me... Ugly, 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 that is. Um, okay. Let me here open up my list of summary boxes. And... Yeah, I don't know. I don't see how to solve that one, but let's... Yeah, I mean, look, I really hate the fact that we've got icon icon going on here. Yeah, and that we couldn't do it in that entity case because it looked horrible. The plus sign was overshadowing the little, you know, the down arrow. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, let's let's take a look. All right. Let's go back to Billy's design over here. So is there a tinge of blue in your, is there, this is a kind of a cold gray with a slight blue tinge. Is that right, Billy? Is Billy here? He's here. His audio, let me see. Oh, What's I was, going on? Yes. Okay. What was the answer to the question? Is the answer to the there question? Is a, there is a tinge of blue in there okay. and you could open up a new tab and change the one to a two for the URL, and you could sort of see a comparison, or the link is in your notebook on the left. The link is in my notebook on the left, okay. So Stephen, I've just pasted in a, an example of uh, that truncation versus opening case into the chat. God, I can hardly see the difference in the blue or the gray, <laughs> but the blue looks better, I think. Yeah, yeah, we like the blue better. It's really subtle, so I think it achieves the, you know, make it stand out less. What were you asking me to do? Link launch first of dollar command line? What is this? should work uh, I, uh, and it just worked for me that should open uh well, that's a horrifying error message uh, um, Sushma, could you please note down that error message mm -hmm. yep because that's wrong uh, and uh why don't you just send a screen capture of what it looks like all right um okay let's look at these uh so there's plus minus versus chevrons I think I prefer plus minus. Yeah, we just kind of really wanted to unify everything so we can get one, you know, opener method and apply it everywhere in the same spot. That's where we wanted to get to. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so now I'm going back to this, this uniconized business. So that only shows up in when it's in the opened view, right? Yeah, yeah. 
I think Billy had a version where it wasn't, but I really don't think you want no, it exposed. We don't want it exposed. Yeah. Um, can we go a little lighter with the dot dot dots here? Yeah. Um. Uh, someone on our live stream is saying that this horrifying error message happens when the application name has spaces in it on the Mac with link launch. That is truly horrifying. Truly, truly horrifying. And I appreciate that somebody out there knows that. Well, oh, there it does. Look, look at that. It has a space. So. All right. So if you just added, uh, you know, quotes or string quotes around it, but I'm about, I'm about to send you there. I just. Okay. Okay. In any case, uh, the um, uh, so, yeah, Sushma, can you report that, please? Yeah. Wow, horrifying, horrifying bug from deep in the entrails of the creature, and one of those weird things that's probably different between Wolf and Desktop and other applications because Wolf and Desktop happens to have a space in its name. Yeah, I run into this sort of thing regularly because I rename my app bundles to have spaces, and it's a right pain in the butt. Well, uh, by the way, it's something for QA to know that they should test with things renamed have spaces in them. Okay, in any case, um, I think the dots should go maybe grayer. They could go the same size, but a little grayer. This data set icon is weird. I don't see this really well. Wait a minute. What is this? I I don't understand. Yeah, that's that, that's Billy being confused. Uh, Sorry, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, what should that, that be? That should be that should be a general head. So the thing that's listed as alternate should be the main thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it should be image three D dot dot dot. Yeah. Right. Okay. And the you know, and then right and the 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 one thing I question is oh he he made. Two errors here. I guess I should have stated that he was done. Uh, <laughs> right. So, so the suggested alternate was that we should not have a special case for sequence. That sequence should be just like the general case. So you'd see sequence of dot 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 there. No, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I not at all. Strongly don't no. agree with that, because that's what people are going to iconize some options in a function. They need to see this. Well. Well, you could argue that if it started with a head, then keep the head. But if it started with just a you know a list of items, then, then you don't inject that head name. That's correct. I mean, but because list of icon, uh, items. Right, but there's no difference between those two cases. But there's to the user. Yeah, look, no, no, this, <laughs> this case. Oh, come on. Nobody knows about OK, this case, if I iconize that, mm -hmm. okay, they just want to see dot, dot, dot there. They sure as hell don't want to see sequence open bracket. Yeah, not at all. Right, but that but that is what they have there. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. Which, if if f is hold all complete, will actually affect evaluation. All right, fine. They they still don't want to see those words there. Yeah, they want to see dot dot dot. I mean, if I I only the only thing I wonder is whether they might want to see something like um, you know, comma. Dot 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 comma dot 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 something like that that indicates up to a small number of items how many items there are. Anybody think that's useful? No. No. Okay. No. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> that mean, was nice I, and definitive. I mean, right. I mean, if you maybe want the, the 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 icon to just be dot 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 comma dot dot dot, so it actually looks like a sequence. But what would the number of dots be in the number of items up to a limit? Would be interesting. Uh, if you want to encode so. two, two, I don't think so. <laughs> I think that's totally obscure. I mean, if, if it was going to be something like this, what I would do here is to have some gray blob in the middle here, right? So, so it's a you know blah comma blah comma blah up to like three or four of them. I so think I, I think the main disti distinction that we care about, and which we're already doing, is one item versus more than one item. Okay, but the more than one item, do you think the dot 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 gets that across, or do you think that would be better got across as a bunch of comma? Uh, you're right. You're right. I'm 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 capitulating on this issue. I think you're right. It should just be dot dot dot. Can we talk about the? Okay, I don't think. Do we really think this is useful? Association array. Well, I guess it does no harm. Okay, with respect to this kind of 
list thing. Does anybody think it's useful to have this? So uh, certainly having just the total number of elements, no. I mean, maybe the dimensions, although obviously for a higher rank or even just a large low dimensional array that can be quite big. Um, yeah, let's skip it. it seems and that information it, is in the opener view. Sure. In the opened view. Right. In the, in the array case, what is that even saying? Is that one one row? Is that many items or total items? Well, I, I think Billy wasn't clear on what that was. Yeah, okay. All right. right. It, yeah. That, that, that was supposed to be the total number of elements in the array. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Which is, I think, irrelevant. Now, this association array case, are we really distinguishing that case? I mean, it's significant to functions like data set. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, all right, OK. Well, I guess it does no harm. I don't, know, I don't know if it's very significant beyond that. Well, I guess transpose. If you try to transpose, it will care. Right. If it's I think this is an unusual case. But, but what happens if it's a, like a list of associations or something? We're not indicating that. It's just a list as far as this is concerned. Right. I mean, I would prefer to just have, you know, the outer head be represented. And... I kind of would, too. I think this one is, is unclear. It suggests that there's only, I mean, first of all, it suggests it's a depth two thing. Mm -hmm. and second of all, it suggests it's only two. Yeah, I, I, let's just skip it. Let's just have this. Yeah, I, I also worry about the uh, uh, typesetting efficiency issues when you're typesetting associations through Icon Eyes. That's, I mean, it might be a long step to figure out if it's an association array. I see. So let's not do it. Let's just have the, the overall head. OK, final thing, the icon for data set. That, that, seems... is, that is a new one. It, the old one looked more like a calendar, but we're still yeah, a little iffy here. What about something that's more like a you know, a spreadsheet looking array type thing, just a pure grid. Is that obviously silly? I don't know what this reminds me of, this data set thing, but it, it I don't think it reminds me of a data set. Okay. Co comments from people. I mean. Well, I, I, yes. Well, I guess I can see how that's supposed to be a data set, but I suppose if I saw it just on its own, uh, I guess I would think it's a table. But I don't know how you distinguish between a table and a data set. <laughs> or a grid, for example. Right. Spreadsheet. I mean, or should we just have the data set head be there? Yeah, maybe we just allow data set to be in the general case. Mm -hmm. I mean, data set has its own opening, closing, shrinking. So I think it's less like you're less likely to iconize it. That's true. Let's okay for now. Let's just put it in the in the general population. Okay. Fair? Okay. Was, and I, and was, I like this italicization. Sorry. Go ahead. Right. So that thing which you were about to say that you like what was going to be another question of, you know, should should we force the style on the user? Or should we allow the user to make their own style for the name? Um, I think we should default to italic. If they put their own style, then, well, what would happen? I mean, uh, John, I mean, it's a mix-in type thing, right? So the, the italic is mixed in. If they also said bold, then they get that as well. If they also said red, they get that as well. Yeah. So I think it's fine. I mean, it just is adding the italic style to it. OK, so just italic, no bold or anything else? No. Okay. So if they put in bold, then then it flows through. We don't we don't block the bold, but we also don't add the bold. Okay. Okay. I think we're great here. I I, I have one suggestion, but feel free to shoot this down. Um, I wonder if, as a special case of sequence, we want something that detects a sequence of rule and rule delayed, which would typically be a sequence of options. What would we iconize it as? I don't know. I mean, I think it would be cool to be able to say options, to be able to say something like, you know, uh, paren options italic. That would be cool. How cool do people think that is? I mean, let's say it's a plot, for example. And um, 
and, you know, and, and and particularly keeping in mind that um, in a you know future version of you know examples in the documentation, one might see this quite a lot. Yes. Right. So, so I think we were thinking we we should add a button to DocuTools that automatically added the name options. I mean, my worry about sort of doing this in the generic case is that, right, we don't really know whether it's options, right? It's well, we actually do if we know what function. If, for the head, if we know the head, if we look at the head when we do the iconization, then we do know what it is. Usually. Not always. Look, if we don't know it, we don't say it. But if we do know it, we could say it. Um, well, I suppose... Pose, but then that would be a you know pretty significant difference between the keyboard shortcut and the function, right? Because the function, the function icon, I certainly wouldn't have any notion of. That's correct. That's but the function is just a is a context free, you know, context independent iconization. I mean, this is just a convenience, right? I mean, it, it's just frankly, something... there's no there's no guarantee you have context in uh, the interactive version either. I mean, you probably do, but absolutely no guarantee. Well, well, fair enough. I mean, look, putting it in DocuTools is a good start, but I mean, I think. Um, yeah, I, well, I guess we can. Well, I guess we can play with it. I, I make. Uh, yeah. right. if, uh, if the interactive version can figure it out, I think it would be a nice thing to do, but don't get it wrong. I mean, yeah. don't start saying that an arbitrary list of rules is options. Only do it when it's in the options position of a function and so yeah, on. Yeah, the other possibility would be to find some design that doesn't communicate options, but communicates rules. I don't remember, do we have a keyboard shortcut for this yet, or? Yeah, in the prototype build, it's Shift-Control-I. Shift-Control-I. Mm -hmm. Which has not been vetted. Um, I sort of scrounged up keys that were available. Okay. Anybody object to it? Um, I would need to do a little bit of research to before I lodge an objection or accept it. Okay. Um, I see. Right, and for example, and certainly with my layouts, right, where I have applications, Mathematica, 11 point, you know, 4.0, you know, debug, dot app, <laughs> that, that can be quite a jump. <laughs> well, we could wrap it. I mean, we could wrap the lines. We could insist the lines don't go wider. Mm. That may be a mistake. Yeah, on Mac and Windows, Control Shift I is convert to input form. Um, Control Shift I or Command Shift I? Mac, or sorry, sorry, I misspoke. Windows and Linux. Windows and Linux is uh, uh, convert to input form. Okay, that's not good. Um, But I, we don't need to decide it here. I can I can sit down with Lou and we can come up with a proposal. It's I, I don't want to waste you know this meeting. Okay. Time All right. Okay. Fine. Um, this is a cool feature. Really a cool feature. Um. Okay. Let me see. Uh, is that everything for this? Assuming we're not. Let, let's not do the the options fanciness for right now. I mean, unless uh, to be explored, but not. Um. Understood. Okay. Right. Uh, and, and I mean, I guess does 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 my example give you any pause about left right opener, or are we okay with summary boxes at least in the short form being different from iconize and you can revisit? Jeremy, do you have any bright ideas here? I, I definitely like this for iconize. I I torn on what to do with the uh, summary blobs. I don't like what I see, but I don't have a solution that doesn't jump. I, I, I suppose, I mean, the, 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 the kind that actually where the top two guys, where, where the always visible things, I mean, there, there are probably 
multiple examples, but may, maybe I should do an inventory before we make any sort of decision. Um, okay, fine. But, but uh, you know, they're, they're not super common, but it's not like this is the only example. I mean, I think something like, uh, uh, like one of the socket objects, I think, like it shows one thing. Like it no, I mean, we may be able to redesign it so it wraps instead of jumping. Okay. Or you could just have name and full name, and the full name is down below. Is down below. Mm -hmm. As a sort of baseline, could we at least update the icon to use the new smaller gray asset? Sure. Oh yeah, that that's true. Uh, I, well, I guess I should defer to Luke as he's the, <laughs> the most recently looked at the boxes, but I think that's trivial. I think that's that'll all help. It, yeah, that'll definitely help. Um. So um, the all the designs that we're looking at the uh, the actual uh, active target area would be the same, right? It's not like growing to the right or something. In terms of you know, if you click, yeah, what you activate. hit, what what you can hit, you're saying. In in yes. this case, yes. for example, if you hit in this area here, does it do anything, or do you have to hit the minus sign? Yeah. That's exactly I would think I you have to hit the minus sign plus some padding, you know. Right. I, I wonder if we want like the limiters around it just to sort of make it clear that it's not an infinitely wide. Well, so I, I mean, there is there is some ambiguity, and the ambiguity would be helped by uh, just a mouse over visual. Yeah, yeah I yeah. agree. I think it should light up on hover. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, do we understand how this works on a touch interface? Um, I think uh, there's probably it. not anything to worry about on a touch interface. Okay. I think but everything will just work. Yeah, I mean, the obviously you won't have the hover effect, but all the actual actions are normal clicks, so we would just normally do that. Okay. All good. Um, all right, I think that's that for the first item here. Um, can I raise something while we're at it? Um, the, uh, the, the standardization of loading icons. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I like this blue for those, or something close to that blue for these loading icons. I wasn't that keen on the darker blue for the, um, uh, that somehow appeared in the machine learning loading icons. I, I just, for this version, all I'm expecting is that the height and color of the loading icons be standardized. Makes right. sense. And, and I think I think there are existing tickets for relevant relevant functional. Okay, but I just I just want to clarify what we're standardizing to. Right. Billy and Jeremy, are you aware of what the um, uh, assets are for that? No, it's been a while since we agreed to that. I don't know if Billy could pull I, it up. I saw the ticket recently. I haven't had a chance to pull up the older designs. Let me go hunt them down. But okay. there was never more than one design, and I think we settled it. So it sounds like a bug, maybe. Well, I don't know, but I mean, no, I'm, I I'm telling you that the the height. Look, I don't know whether I can do this, but let's say net model of I don't know what. Let's let's guess that this isn't. Um, okay, so now what we should see here, whenever it wakes up, whatever it's doing, I don't know what it's doing. Oh gosh. Um, okay, let me pick up another one. I'm just gonna pick a random. Uh, we need a new function, random net model. <laughs> 2D, 2D face thing uh, always gives me a. I'm sorry? Okay, there, you see that? Well, actually that's a reasonable blue. Which version is this now? This is the current version. <clears throat> I also just emailed the last sort of design iteration we had. Okay. Well, this is also, by similar. the way, this should say downloading from repository or downloading content from repository. The word the should not be there. Okay. And the this I is a different, go ahead. Yeah, the, what was that? The difference from, that I see from any other old progress indicators is that the text here is, it is in blue and the old text was in gray. <clears throat> Oops. Well, Jeremy or anybody else, do you want to opine on that? I'm not a huge fan of the blue text. But Billy, that's what you've specced here or not? Yes. Do you like it or would you prefer gray text? 
I think we liked the blue with the the dark blue text with the blue box, but if it were gray, it would look fine as well. As long as it's darker than the line below. Yeah, yep. It, it'd be okay. Um, okay, well, so could, could we just see a version of this with gray? Yeah. Uh, and and what what's what's the older gray? Can, well, I guess we're waiting for that download to finish. But uh, Nick, can you give us uh, an input that will you know generate the the loading panel or whatever it's? Um, so if you did something like entity prefetch of element, you'd get the download monitor that is used. Okay, let's for... try that. Yeah, I really, I prefer that gray. It's, oh, you're talking about the text color, not the background. Yes. Yeah, okay. the thing we should add the old, old background gray. We updated pretty much everything that I'm aware of that downloads to use the... Right, so, so this one here, mm -hmm. it's just, we haven't standardized properly the names and so on. And, and this is high, this is taller. Be nice to standardize the height, not as important. I just think the color and the colors should be standardized. Okay. Who was um, talking before? Is it easy to grab the color from that code whoever was talking before? That was Nick. Uh, Nick. Yeah, I can, I can send it to you, but there's a... There's a kernel function that basically just defines uh, what grabs from that type or that style. Okay. So if you okay. could send that over and then I could put it in and then send it on out. Okay. There's a lot of stuff here that's really good. I, I'm, you know, this is all looking good. Okay. Um, related topic here is information. So is this also a design question? Yes, very much so. And uh, so, and so. Uh, okay, yeah. so these are examples of information. Suggestions. I out today, so maybe we still need Jeremy, but um, Lou and John Fools. Well, I think it would be helpful if Lou and John stay okay. there. Okay. Uh, right, so. so this is the design for the multi-symbol Okay, so we're losing the line printer paper. Yeah. Make yeah, it I have to... more obvious. We have columns instead of rows. So it's just the way it's it's alphabetized. Okay. Do we want to alphabetize by by column? I'm guessing it's multi-column, which applies that way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. Um. Yeah, I, I think the line printer paper was was good in the eighties. <laughs> Um, it's a wrong hey, color. That, hey, that, like, that that color scheme is, you know, like it's less old than my time here because I remember when we that we changed this maybe about five years ago. Yeah, so. I agree with you. Yes, <laughs> the, um, I think it might have been green at some point. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, okay. Um, Okay, so so let me let me lay out what the issue remaining issues are. Um, one, yes, one is what does the multi look like and how does it behave when you click on it. Um, the other is right. So we have in the old information has question mark and double question mark, which are differ by an option, right? It's long long yep. form. And so the question, so first of all, we need to decide what exactly that means in the new world. Is that just a different state of, of the thing or is it actually a different return thing? And the second thing we need to decide, does that only apply to symbols or does that apply to anything that can, you can information about? Well, one question is syntactically, I don't even know what a pre-question mark does. I mean, in other words, is it the case that you could say question mark file here? No. Okay, so the question mark binding. The, the I question, mean, mark, question mark binding necessarily um, stringifies its argument, but it does parse, right? It needs to have a full form and it parses to information of 
of string with either long form goes to true or false i think is okay so question here this question mark thing is a beginning of line escape effectively right yes i mean was back from back in the day of that, i mean that is the way the front end treats it fine so one thing that beginning of line escapes do in the modern world is they go into a different you know input style right so like if i do a a, a greater than sign or if i do you know all our various beginning of line escapes now you know, well, except time. the difference is that this one actually works in the standalone kernel as well. Yeah, I, I mean, this is this is in the language. It's not like, like what you're talking about, which is extra language. Yeah, I understand, but it is going to stringify. I mean, I'm just saying, if we wanted to, we could present it as a, you know, an active. Uh, you know, something which does something on him, uh, you know, which immediately does something to the input. I don't know whether we care. We maybe don't care. Um, there is one problem with that. It might not be a serious problem, but uh, is that it's not just question mark at the beginning of a cell. It's question mark at the beginning of a line, which may be in the middle. No, that's horrifying. That's horrifying. And uh, look, that functionality is fine to support in the terminal version, you know, along with shell escapes at arbitrary lines. But I have to say, I think that has, you know, gone the way of the what's a good 1980s thing well the, uh, i mean bang has what you know, in the middle of a are we not, we're not supporting that anymore are we exactly that's that's an example of something that has gone the way of whatever you were going to say no i was going to refer <laughs> to some popular culture thing just to prove how uh, max headroom <laughs> yes for example <laughs> you know, <hang> drink <laughs> yeah um, um anyway right I mean, except people do, I mean, certainly people create multiple input cells, and right, each one of those inputs is, trans, is sent individually to the kernel. So it's not like there's a huge difference between that. Right, um, if, if, you, if you do question mark foo and then enter, and then whatever other expression you want to enter. Two, whatever, yeah. Those will be sent as two individual, and there will be two separate mathing calls to the front end, even if they're in the same cell. From the front the, end to the kernel, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Because the front end. You right. mean in this case here? Yes. The front end will notice that there's one complete expression and will send that to the kernel and receive its input, and then it'll send a okay, second. But by the way, notice the bug of that weird internal backtick symbol information. Well, yeah, that, that's specific to the prototype build. That's something I'm okay. fixing. I just haven't pushed an update. Okay, I don't understand what we want here. I mean, the, the fact that this thing works intermediate to uh, in an intermediate part of a, an input seems unbelievably surplus to requirements in the post 1980s. Right. Well, it's a, but 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 that's exactly my point. It doesn't work well. I mean, it actually sort of does. But we're not actually arguing that. The point is that those are even though they're in the same cell, they're two inputs. Okay, but I don't understand why we should support this at all. I think it should just be at the beginning of the line. Uh, I mean, at the beginning of well, the I'm not making a strong argument that we should. I'm just pointing out that it is something that will break if we do this. What's something that will break? The, you know, uh, input cells. Uh, well, you know, dealing with input cells that have, you know, embedded question mark or question mark, question mark, you know, as a new line in there, it, you know, or, or, you know, as the first line, but then followed by legitimate inputs. Um, you I know. see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Do we think that's a documented feature from the notebook front end? It was documented. Well, I mean, it's, it's certainly documented that you can feed multiple inputs into a single cell. And question, sure. mark is, and question mark is a documented operator in, uh, well, a special input form in operator input. Form. All right. Okay, fine. So let's assume you can do this. I don't know how that affects what we're talking about here particularly. Let, let's, let's go look at the, uh, so you're just attacking my idea that the question mark should 
be should jump into some kind of weird special. I, 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 basically, I'm saying that question uh, that comparing question mark and equal is a false equivalence. Fine. I'm not. I'm not saying that your idea is entirely bad. I'm just saying that uh, declaring that it's good because of the equivalence is is a bad argument. Right. But so the question is, could we enhance the role, you know, the behavior of question mark in some interesting way if we were to go into a different mode? I mean, we could. For example, we could put an autocompleter on it, which would be nice. I think well, it already autocompletes. <laughs> does it? Yeah, do question mark plot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay. Well, fair enough. Okay. Um, right. I mean, the real question we need to answer is, you know, are, are so, right, so do compare, you know, do question mark plot and then question mark question mark plot which should give you the exit oh that this is already giving you the new guy yeah and the prototype they behave the same way right so i guess we need a non-prototype build to to see how those two guys compare and then the question is are those two different views on you know two di right does this also become a guy with you know movable views or does it become uh or are these, in fact, two different evaluated results? Look, my initial take would be question mark, question mark, uh, just is the version of this where that bottom panel is open. And you know there might be a plus sign or something like that to open this bottom panel, which would be absent um, in the pure, you know, in this pure case, in, in the single question mark case. That would be my initial take. I mean, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not sure I understood that claim. Is the claim that in the question mark case we just have the blue bit? Or... Yes, that's what I'm saying. With it, with it, with just some opener for the rest of it. Whereas, with, the, with you know, whereas with, with a little muted opener. Whereas in the double question mark case, it would have that second panel open by default. Okay, and this will be special to symbols. That's what I'm thinking, yes. Okay. Um, All right, let, let's take a look at the designs that you have over here. I mean, I think um, this built-in symbol is awfully heavy, and I'm worrying that these, that these definitions here should be, wouldn't it be nicer if those definitions, like we do in the case of, if I do this, see, those definitions have separators around them. Now, I understand that here, I think there's too much space there. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't, that, isn't that matching the documentation? It's close, at least. Yeah, but I think that just visually, there's too much space between the, the uh, template line and the explanation. This could be more compact, but I think that this is too compact. Mm -hmm. Could you pull up, did Heidi, her and I talked through a version. I don't know if that was part of what you were sent, but we wanted to, to, to make the function head a little heavier, the text a little lighter, which would help. And here, yeah. I don't understand why that has to be on a single line. I mean, I, I think that doesn't really help anything. It's just I think for it compactness, if it fits, I guess. Yeah. Right, and obviously, for some, you know, try something like question mark D, which has long usage lines. I'm curious if, if they line break or if it just becomes very. Yeah, it's not very long. Oh, those aren't as long as I thought they would be. What about uh, discrete limit, maybe? Right, so there it becomes very, just very wide. Well, what happens if my notebook is less wide? It okay. breaks. Uh, welcome to Although, the next world. Things just work. <laughs> How nice. <laughs> except that, except that, let me point out. Okay, Victory so there's lap. several problems. <laughs> What's that? Victory lap. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, there's several problems here. First of all, it's very hard to distinguish the um, uh, template from the rest because the font is the same. Second of all, obviously the spacing here is a little bit funky because the spacing here got closer between those two than it is given the built up math here. 
Yeah, I think we definitely need some extra space between different usages. Even, even if we're on a single line, I think we need some extra space between usages. Right, and you can see D, which was not very long, is now also line broken. Uh, yes, well, it looks beautiful. Um, this thing about putting the attributes first just seems awfully pedantic. Let's put the options first, for goodness sake. Let's put the attributes down. I mean, I would think that it should go symbol name and context at the bottom. I mean, symbol name, duh. Well, I guess I guess there could be a case where it's an in, you know, where it's like a plus sign or something. But that seems awfully obscure. I yeah, mean, I mean, you can do yeah. like question mark slash at for map since. Or we're... even question mark plus. Shouldn't question mark plus work? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, if it's possible to display symbol name in the case where there is a non-trivial symbol name mapping, uh, but in the other cases, it's just, just incredibly pedantic. I don't see the point at all. Right. Um, and these documentation links, I think that those should be visually correspond to those I things that you see in the raft. Although the raft, I think, only has for local documentation, or, or you're just suggesting that you should add, we should add iconography to match. I'm, I'm suggesting adding iconography and maybe the I for local and something else for the web. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say documentation links. I would just say documentation. Okay. Um. But we really need to move those attributes down because they are really obscure. And presumably when the thing has down values, that will appear here as well, right? Yeah, it will as long as it's not read protected. So if you... um, although I've been playing with this and uh, just now, because I really hadn't seen this feature before today. And I can't say that I'm very happy with what's been done as a result. It's now showing things as a list of hold patterns which is considerably less useful if you're trying to tweak things, I think. Um, By the way, down I'm sorry, what are you saying? I, I didn't quite follow. Yeah, that. uh, that's uh, horrifying. You see there, yeah, it's, it's showing this whole pattern. What I'm used to uh, when I'm exploring something like this is being able to, uh, I mean, you know, it has the literal colon equals, so I can copy, paste, tweak, and evaluate. Yes. Yes, that's what we want. And the yeah, fact that it's got an X dollar there is crazy, crazy. Well, that's probably local symbol renaming that may or may not be. No, I understand, but it's wrong. Well, yeah. I, and well, yeah. well, so, I mean, that is my big use for this. My big use for this isn't to look at something, it's to change something. You know, where, where I maybe don't have the original code, but I can, you know, go digging for the code, so. I think what we should say is we should call this definitions, because I think the down value thing is unbelievably technical. And I think they should say f of one equals, f of x blank, colon equals, blah, blah, blah. Right, well, what happens if we also have up values and own values and possibly sub values? No. I think, I think, what 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 happens now? Um, I, I don't have a convenient example here, but I mean, don't we do the right thing, showing, you know, caret colon equal or whatever? Don't we do that? Right now, it's separated by. We basically look specifically for down value lists or the down values, the up values, sub values. Sorry, by right now, I mean what we do like in eleven three. Um, what did I just do here? I have to. I have to not have a down value. In order yeah, to make I think that that's work. the problem. Um, just add another argument to f. Right. Yeah, I guess that we it shouldn't be too hard to to change. Okay, that. this is utterly obscure. Up value transformations with uh, smooshed words. And down value with it with um you know multi words that's crazy. This should just say this should be called definitions, I think, and this could be called up values because anybody who understands 
you know, look, it could be called definitions and then maybe up value definitions. Are they making sense? Yeah. And sub value yeah. definitions, if we have yes. those. Right. I mean, so um, one thing, um, so one thing we don't, I think we don't currently show, um, which might, right. I mean, we have other, uh, we have other kinds of values that we don't necessarily currently show and maybe we should. Like print values and so on. Like, yes, format values. We should show these. Right, and I guess the question, well, so maybe we should, I don't know, maybe it's useful to sort of mush up, down, I don't think it, I don't think we should mush, smush them. I think we should have them as separate. I think we should have definitions. Look, I think we should say we should say we should say value for the own value. Then we should say definitions for the down values. Then we should say up value definitions. I kind of guess that goes up value definitions, etc. Format definitions, blah blah blah. Okay. That's what um, I think. And then we have numeric definitions. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and all the other ones. Yes, and I think, I think that might be all of them. I, think, I feel like we're forgetting one. Uh, now, oh, for, 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 for what it's worth, uh, historically, we've always uh, thrown values first. I don't know if there is a good reason for that or if that's arbitrary. Well, they're applied first. So in that sense, it makes sense to have them presented first. If, if yeah, but I think that's utterly obscure. I think that people, I, I don't think it matters because I think most things will either have up values or I, I think this is fine. Why not just skip up, you know, skip guys which are empty? And of course. And if they're both down values and up values, I think we should stick up values first because those are applied first. And it makes sense then for people, right? People are used to reading definitions. Top to bottom, from, yeah. Top to bottom. What are you I, saying? I so, I'm sorry, sorry. Say that again. What are you guys saying? Basically, saying basically, we should list the definitions in the order that they're applied. And since up value definitions are always applied first, if they're there, then we should list them first. Okay, but it's going to be very obscure if you see up value definitions and then well, definitions. I mean, if you have up value and down value definitions, it's always obscure to a certain degree. But I think we okay. So then, what I what I think we should do is in that case, order. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay, then my proposal will be, if there is an up value definitions, then say explicitly down value definitions. If there is no up value, then just say definitions. But still so, have- but, but still putting up value first. Yeah, but, but still put it first. That's yeah, fine. I'm sorry, put, put them you, in did, the order. you change it I, on your- uh, No, I understand, order. okay. So, so there, if the up values is present, then put them first. If they're not, then omit down value from the key of the next one. By the way, this should say value or delayed value, right? Because there can also be the colon equals case, and that will not be visible here. Unless we say, unless we write out for value x equals blah, blah, blah. Which should we do? Should we write out value as x equals, or should we an x colon equals, or should we have value and delayed value? Well, traditionally, we've used the equal and colon equal. Um, uh, but and and once again, well, let's see. Um, I guess I feel I, I guess I feel like equal and colon equal is sort of clear because if you don't know the difference between those, you can. You know, select the colon. All right, fine. So, so then... if we have the equal and the colon equal, once again, we lend ourselves to making it a bit easier to copy, paste, and tweak. All right, okay, fine. Is this going to have click to copy? Why don't we make click to copy for these things? Um, yeah. I, 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 I think, um, I think having, if by click to copy you mean having, you know, a trivial copy button is good, but there might be cases where someone wants to actually click inside to get a piece of it as well. I'm not, I, 
Yeah, I mean, well, I don't I think we should that, deny that. Yeah, I, I often. Right, okay. I often, you know. So long as the selection is easy to make for the whole thing. Though. Well, I mean, it, you can just have a button that trivially, uh, you know, throws the whole thing on the clipboard, and that would be awesome. Okay, but as a the whole thing, all the definitions. No, no, no. It, it, for each definition, so there would be a button for each definition. Or right. Okay. C can we loop back to one thing here about values? Um, what are we going to call this? Are we going to say value, and then it's going to say x equals? It's a little weird to do that, isn't it? Or we could call it definition. Uh, but then that conflicts with the down value uh, definitions when there's no down value. Um, assignment. What do you think? Works for me. Not obviously ridiculous to me. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay. Uh, all right. So, so can we loop back here to what we're doing with the rest of this? So, okay. So we're going to figure out a better formatting for these things here that is more in line with what happens with the raft. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, we're going to figure out a way to plusify for the case of single question mark. to indicate that there's more down here, whether it's a plus sign or Guillaume type thing, I don't know what it is. Uh, I'm not wild about the way it says built-in symbol at the top. And I mean, these are very heavy, these headers. It's like, you don't say, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, could we try to make those thinner like half height and somehow Jeremy, do you have an idea for what to do with those? Not not half height. So they're just not that important. I mean, they they could be lighter. We could make the type a little lighter if it. If could yeah, we I think the little tag, the little lozenge that says the. Oh, so it's not full width. It's just a little thing. Yeah. What do you mean? It'd be like left aligned and only the width of the text. What yeah, would be only the width little, of the tab? Right, so the first line would be like a little tab. Yeah, a tab instead of a bar. So if you go to like anything on in documentation, um, there's a little tab on the top. What? Yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean by anything in documentation? You mean? Just to see like an example. Oh, I see, I see, I see what you're saying. So you, you're saying if I go to this and I go to, for example, cloud object, you're saying that thing there. Is that right? Or something like it. Yeah. Okay. And but then the then the vertical then then at the top we've got something where most of what's there is blank, right? The the top yeah. thing. Yeah. Which can look weird. But look, this is way too heavy. Okay. I mean, it's like, you don't say, you ask for information on a thing, it's like, yeah, I know it's a cloud object because I just saw it was a cloud object. Get what I'm saying? I'm wondering about the parentheticals like we have for entities. You mean to just say after this name? You know, light gray cloud object. Paren cloud object here. Yes. It's not and then after the print, you have your opener or whatever. What opener? Well, the plus to expand you know, in, in the symbol case. Yeah. I mean, I, look, I think in the symbol case, repeating the name of the symbol at the top seems like a decent thing to do. Saying built-in symbol seems very surplus to requirements. I mean, it, well, no, it's, it's useful to say that. But, okay, let's try and mock up something where the main event is, you know, this name here, 
And I don't think in the case of an entity with a special color, we don't even need to say entity. Am I making sense? It's only in the case, well, I mean, this is going to be utterly weird. I, yeah, I mean, we there's say, some cases where there's not an obvious, for data bin, I mean, I don't think putting the bin association as the header would be super obvious or the UUID. Well, what about this thing, the short ID? That's what I would expect. Okay. Paren data bin. Mm -hmm. Or this thing, paren cloud object. Could you scroll down, look at date and file? They just seem weird if we apply that there. You do print date object next to this string form. Hmm. Well, dates dates obviously have their own iconography, which by the way, I think is overly heavy. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see a redesign of that. I don't think it, the dates really need to be quite so bold. Okay. And I don't think, I mean, we could, we should try some things debolding them slightly. I mean, if we have a demi bold or something, that would be the best, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Okay, but, but over here, um, look, we could try keeping the thing as you have it, except that in the case of this, we really have got to say the name of the symbol somewhere at the top. It's kind of crazy to not do that. Well, eh, 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 maybe it isn't. Look, why don't we just try to save what we have here, but just make that top bar much less prominent? Yeah, okay. Um, okay, with respect to these multi, multi things, I mean, I don't really understand what the formatting of this, this seems very heavy, this, this in modern times to have, I don't know. I mean, so what's the question here? Is uh, this? You know, so right, so the question is, so right now we have the appearance that you see on the left. And the question is what should the, if, if we're moving away from, uh, you know, dot matrix paper, then uh, what A, what should it look like? And then even though it's not shown here, what should the action be when you click on it? And I think actually, I think we decided last time that it should be basically the same. It should spawn a, a new cell. That I think so. Yeah, I think so. Right. So then I guess the question is, right. It's only the look of this. Yeah. And I have no strong opinion. I mean, I think um, I leave, uh, I mean, Jeremy, Billy, what do you think? I don't see your mouse moving, Stephen. You're looking at the system. Yeah, this stuff. Yeah, I, I was happy with where we ended up here. It's nice and simple and clean. It's not too flat. I mean, the old one is just too ornate. Okay, what about the way the the um, uh, the the, the uh, contexts work? Are we happy with that? And these things seem awfully heavy. I was going to say, they could be a lighter gray. Could they match the openers for what we use in... The headers when making cells group cell groupings. The chevron that turns. Sorry, say that again. What the the, the new cell group openers? Yes. But we yeah, don't that use, would work. You're talking about the right hand cell openers, the chevron, but they're not normally there when it's open. They're usually you know side effect of closing. Yeah, I think we want the explicit openers, especially since, right, we want people to know that they can close these. And yes, because they make it very, very long. Right. Um, now, if you, want to kind of gray, if you want to gray down or unfold the context, I, I don't have any objection to that. Um, I do have one question for Lou, which is at the present time, are we fixed at two columns or is it dynamically? How is the number of columns? Um, the information code looks at the width of your notebook and then the width of the strings that come back and decides how many columns to display based on those things. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Um, let's, okay. 
I, I just want to, okay, so I think we're, we're in good shape on most of the stuff. Um, we have a number of interesting comments from our live stream, which I just want to go through here. Um, uh, let's see. Somebody is asking, does that mean format values and subvalues will be documented? Are they not documented now? Have we never documented them? Yeah, subvalues was never externally documented. I'm not sure about format values. Um, wow. But wow. Yes, I, have, 30 I, years? Have no pro I have no problem with documenting them. I think it. I think it'll basically be a matter of switching from internal to normal, and then maybe adding a few examples. All right, that that's a separate discussion. Let's put that back on the LCC agenda for another time. Okay. Um, uh, someone is pointing out um, uh, a nifty feature for reading code might be to add a key shortcut to show the information panel as an attached cell for symbols currently under the mouse. Information. I think, I, yeah. I, I think there's something to that idea, not necessarily exactly in the way it's described, but I think there's something to that idea that could be interesting. Right. I mean, there's the other thing that we've had, which we probably should provide for users in a more convenient way, is the thing that we built for the uh, course authoring tools, where the thing displays that right hand uh, key. You know what I'm talking about? Um, no, I don't think I do. Yeah, let me show you for one second. Um, let's see, where is it? Courseware tools? How do I? No, where the heck is courseware? How do I, how do I start yeah. a new? Oh, yeah, course lecture. There we go. Okay, so let's say I've got this course lecture here. And I say, generate recording configuration. Okay. Okay, that's my transcript, that's my controls. Okay, where is it? So what I want to do now, okay, that's my- Boy, that, that is just a trademark Stephen bizarre palette there. Which one? <laughs> this thing here? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exactly what I associate with you. <laughs> uh, the... So basically, you're saying if you were to iconize Stephen, this would be the icon? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here, look. See, now it went advanced to begin. And now I say, gosh, I can't even remember how this works. Slow type. Yeah, there we go. So then, okay, so see that? So this is the recording area of my screen. Right, right yeah. I mean, people have been using this for our MOOCs, right? So if I go evaluate yeah, here, So you're referring to that? call out that showed up there, the X yeah. plus Y plus C thing. What the heck is this? Okay. I mean, it's interesting, I think. I think that's interesting for, uh, for example, in presenter tools, I think that's an interesting thing. Well, the, but this is, this is a very presentation oriented uh, sort of thing. I, How I does think that even work? What is it doing that, do you know? Um, I don't, I, I would have to guess, um, it, 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 it may be, um, some form of overlay or attached cell that's going on here. Um, the, we really need to distribute these course authoring tools, by the way, they really work quite nicely and people should be using them. Yeah. Um, based on the shadow, I, I, I think that it's not a separate window. I think it's inside the notebook. And and created how? Well, so we've long had a way to uh, to basically overlay something on top of an, an entire notebook. Um, even before we had attached cells, we had a mechanism that did that. Teo added it to support uh, some drag and drop stuff. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is using either that or the attached cell mechanism. OK. Okay, hey, uh, point for Sushma. We, uh, can, can you remind Andre that we really need to package this stuff so, so we can distribute it? Okay. Um, 
Okay, but anyway, do we think that there's any value to something like this for you? You think this is a very special case to what the way it's? No, well, I, I think the what we're seeing here is very much you know presentation oriented. I, whereas the way I interpret the the comment is you know that it might not just be about presentation, but it might be you know I don't know, right, you know so sort of an exploration interface. Right. So uh, you know, it's sort of like how. IDEs have, you know, go to definition. Yeah, yeah, right. This would be a in line present the, the down values. Yes, of, it's a good idea. Right. I think that's yeah, and, part and, of and, and, and Visual Studio actually has something very similar where uh, instead of go to definition, it's kind of an attached interface where it shows the definition, you know, right where you're at. So you can see the code you were looking at and the definition side by side. And you can even then go and explore multiple definitions and it shows them in kind of a, a tab view. Right. So um, the live stream is pointing out that command shift K should be somehow automatic. Yeah, this is a separate topic. We, we should put this into the user assistance discussion, but this yeah, is that's a separate fine. topic. That's fine. And um, in that context, I can demo the Visual Studio feature I'm talking about to you. I think okay. it would be comments on the live stream. Up values are not really applied before down values. Up values of arguments are applied before down values of the head. It's all true. Um, but down values of the arguments are applied before all that. Yes, that's true. But this is saying for a particular uh, head F, yeah, we're not that, seeing the definitions for everything. We're seeing the definitions for one thing. Right. Um, let's see. Suggestion to use the the um, uh, style that we have for external languages somehow here uh, in commenting that the top grade bar makes it look like something from the 1990s. OK, well, we at least advanced from the 1980s there. <laughs> um, I don't know. Do we want to go to any color here? I, I doesn't. I, I think. I mean, I think if if this were a two thousand teens color scheme, it might be white. I mean, people seem to be um, very keen on white and flat these days. I'm not sure that's useful. Let's leave it to the design group to decide. I mean, they're going to they're going to uh, you know move that color down anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, I think we have to wrap here in just a moment. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're already over time, so yeah, this is a, this is a completely different script. discussion. This register catch thing is an utterly different discussion, quite interesting, but but utterly different. This caching as opposed to suppressing repeated error messages, that is going to be another one of these design meets, uh, you know, graphic design meets, um. What on earth is all of this? Well, anyway, I think this is for another time. Yeah. All right. I think that's it for today. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to folks on the live stream. Appreciate the comments. See you all soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.